and you being a policeman, uh, probably your next book, just an idea. Mm -hmm. Would you write about crime? Well, that's a lot of people have told me that, and I'm considering it seriously. Uh -huh. Yes. You have a few thieves in mind. <laughs> no, not, not necessarily thieves. Um, police work is really not about thieves. Yes. I'm sometimes surprised when people view police station as a place where criminals come. No, it's not true. By the way, I agree with you. Um, people have diverse reasons. There are people who go uh, to they view police officers as safety, security, mm -hmm. uh, public service, perfect. Mm -hmm. There are people who view police officers as where thieves go. And there are people who think police stations are where the real thieves are. Different people <laughs> have different, <laughs> different, people have different uh, perspectives. Now, uh, let me understand my perspective. Um, a lot of us, this, this law that was enacted in 2011, the, the, the National Police Service Act, I've, I've been reading it, and there's something to the extent of community policing committees, which is very much like school committees in, in its structure and everything. Yes. And what this means is that we are giving public access to police stations to come and make their own contributions in the way they think they should be policed. I've always wondered, how many Kenyans ever think that they will one day find themselves in police cells? Okay. If you would take thought of that, then you will find reason to visit that police station at least once in a while to check the condition of that cell so that when you land there one day, you may enjoy. Ah. I mean, I mean it's Just supposed to be... Just visit police station it's, it's, for fun. Yes, to, to, to see what's happening there. so that Because there's a likelihood, it may not be you, but it could be your son. If they were to spend a night in that lockup facility, would you be comfortably sleeping and saying, oh, I think that place has a good toilet, it has good, you know? Oh, but you mean go sample the cells? Yes! <laughs> no, no, no. Not nifungie. Yeah. Just to see. You know, a few Kenyans have already discovered it. Um, I'm very happy to mention that there are some, 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 some gentlemen who are now doing a, a lot of good work in our police stations, especially in Nairobi, painting our walls to make them neat. Because look at a situation where you are in a setting like, say, for example, Kleleish, where all houses are good, and here is a police station with, you know, very poor painting. If you are a reasonable human being, and I believe many Kenyans are, you would consider creating just a committee, the same way we do for schools. If you, your school lacks good paint, you will sit and agree as a community, let's go and do something for this school. And many Kenyans are coming out to do this, which I find good and I congratulate them. But there's a procedure to follow. The procedure is simple. I'm sure you, you, you can't tell me that flossing Mawano and on your walls have not been painted. The, the procedure is simple. Just go to the, have a discussion with the, with the local OCS. Tell him, we feel as a community, our police station mm -hmm. does not look good. We want to improve it. Wow. It's a good thing. From your perspective. Let, let me ask you, have you been to a police station, not as a criminal, just maybe you lost your ID, you wanted a uh, police abstract? Uh, one of my cars got an accident this oh, week. Yes. I had an abstract. And um, sometimes the queue is long, like central police has very many customers. Cars, uh, loss of ID, and maybe oh, fingerprints. Customer. Yes, they are customers. The public is our customer. Okay. Yes. We are service providers. And uh, you find there's a very long queue, and there's an old lady who probably may have wanted to sit. I mean, common sense would dictate that if you leave that place, you may have a mind of bringing a, a, a bench just to support your police station because it's, a, it's giving you the service. If you stood for so long on a long queue and you were very tired, and then you go complaining, oh, that is police yet a voice. You know, it's not solving the problem. I've told you that the committees that we have in the name of community policing committees, are the same, the structure is very much like those of schools. And in my local schools, where I come from, we, the community, identify problems and help, of course, with the Minister of Education official, the teachers there. We help in solving those problems. How I wish Kenyans would look at it that way also. Thank you. And you actually bring up a very interesting point because I was actually told, you please confirm, mm -hmm. that you can hire police officers for your own protection, legally. Yes. I can come to the station and say, nataka kuchil na makara wangu, as in, for my own protection. How much is that? Well, that, that is, uh, you know, uh, 
<laughs> I'm not going to say how much it is, because this is a discussion you hold between the local police command. Of course, this money is paid to, to Treasury, not to, this. not to the officers. No, to the Treasury. So if I want police officers at my place, as long as I can afford it. That's what's happening. I mean, you go to many funerals today, you find police in uniform controlling crowds and doing all that kind of stuff. No, I'm talking Sorry. about, I'm talking about Kobo Mayangu. Same, I saw a place in Kitengela. People have built very nice houses, mm -hmm. but they ran away Wakachezo Manyumba. Was it Kitengela or Rongai? Wakachezo Manyumba. And I was like, hey, that was magic. Wakaturoka Wakachezo Manyumba Zao. And then... I'm like, why can't you just go to a police station? Then just pay every day. Say, so, I want you order for two police officers. So every day you probably... No, no, I think that, that is now what, what I was talking about. When that community comes together and discuss with the OCS, they, they tell him this is what we're experiencing. For, for example, if there are robberies, nighttime robberies, they can agree in principle and say, we need patrols intensified in this area. And they, the OCS will agree with them. So... Community policing actually is the solution, the real solution to policing. It's not a question because if every Kenyan is going to feel so insecure that they want a police, every man, a policeman at their gate, we don't have those numbers. But we can have communities working together to create the arrangement to make sure that the resources are shared. I mean, if we had just one patrol car doing rounds there with two or three officers inside, and then the, the, the problem is resolved. But because there are no communities, people are not speaking in the same language, you live on your own, the, other, the next neighbor lives on their own. So you have your own problems. They could be common problems, but you don't have a common solution. Okay. Yes. And uh, let's say I want to exercise my right to freedom. And I understand the police officers can support that. Can I go for a, to a police station and uh, apply for two police officers just to walk me around to feel the fresh air? How long will that, how long do you want that to take? I've, I've always had... Um, Okay, but this is too much. Mm -hmm. Like walking in Kariobangi at night just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> just to patrol with police officers. You want to patrol with police? Yes, patrolling with police officers. No, that's a different arrangement. Um, because patrolling pol with police is not the same thing as hiring police. It is because in this case, mm -hmm. we are not patrolling in an area. Let's say strolling at night. <laughs> with police? Yes. By your side? Exercising your right of right but to you know, freedom. You know, there are people who live some, uh, in places they have never seen outside past 7 p.m. Really? Right? No, so I don't know. Tell there me. There are places. There are places. There are places. Uh, so I'm just asking if you ever want to feel your environment at night, it's okay to go hire police officers for your freedoms, like freedom of movement. You know, uh, th there will be a few questions you'll be asked, especially if you're able to convince the officers that really it's worth it. Because there must be, you know, danger is not imaginary. You can't sit and imagine, oh, there could be danger, so I need this kind of, no. Squavo, this thing, yeah, Peter Samoja is imaginary. Who says that? There are people who say, uh, there are zones, no. Yeah, there are places where Usiwai, Peter, Samoja, Sambili, Satatu. And I believe Kenya, Kenya police is very capable. Mm -hmm. Very, very capable. You know things. Uh, you know how things happen. <coughs> mm -hmm. You know, as in, you know. I know. Wewe sayi kama wewe na izo vitu milisoma Israel. Ukiambuo wendo utulete Dennis Muremi. Savannah. Mm -hmm. Utamleta. Coordination is very high. That's right? true. That's true. So I'm sure pia, there are places like on the ground where insecurity is such that uh, things happen and I understand capacity in terms of numbers. There are areas that, say, we had uh, former Kondele of CS Wanyama on the show. Akatombia, they had to intervene for Dandora for things to, for things to change in Dandora. Yes? But before intervention, the grace period between intervention and things happening, I'm, I'm sure kuna information. You know, um, policing today is in intelligence-led. Yes. And most of that intelligence is with the public. Most of And that's why I, th I still think that we need to change our perspective on how we want to visit our police stations. Because you have very, very key information, something that could help resolve a very serious problem. And you know it, and you imagine that police will get into your mind. I can tell you I'm a policeman. I have no way of getting into anyone's mind. Until they come out voluntarily to tell us this is what's happening. Okay. And so we think that 
we need those forums where the members of public can come, especially if it's a case of a lo within a certain locality. Those locals, they have a way of communicating this to the police. With that partnership, crime will be a thing of the past. Okay. And before we let you go, other, um, and before we talk about the police, uh, other ways people can join the police, right? Um, Omanyala was recently um, absorbed by the police because of being the fastest Kenyan, I assume, right? <laughs> That's one way. Akuenda kwa kiwanja. Are there other ways that people can join the police without going to recruitment? Today, our, our laws allow for uh, national police reserves. Uh, this is an arrangement where you volunteer your services, the way you are saying, and you serve for a period of two years. Uh, if there are those vacancies, that is, they are usually announced. And you work for police, you, you can work for those two years, if, 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 if you feel like continuing, then you apply for another two years. And during that period of time, you have police powers. You have police powers? Yes. Like National pol Police Reserve at police. Pol na uh, police reservists can arrest you. They have arresting powers. They are police officers. Oh, interesting. So... Um, I, th I'm, I'm, I think I was addressing somebody like you now because you, I think you're past the age of joining police, but you can still, if there's, <laughs> if there's room, ca you can volunteer your services. All you should know is that you will never be paid rem remuneration in terms of salary, but allowances, yes. But I think they call that a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> because as in, if I'm past the age of joining the police, right? Mm -hmm. Um... I can just give services without being paid? No, allowances, but oh, not, allowances. not salary. Because uh, you are volunteering your services. So I get paid per thief. <laughs> 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 uh, there's structures, I believe. Yeah, yeah, there are structures. Okay. Mm. Sawa, sawa. And uh, the age, why is there an age limit? For, uh, see, I thought the older you get, the more experienced you are. Uh, fr from, even from our athletes, you will discover that when they are gone past 30, they're no longer as effective as they were in their 20s. Police uh, training is very intensive. And uh, if you are too very old, say 35, I don't think you would measure up with an 18-year-old because you have do, do, accomplish the same tasks, say if it is route match. You are going to run, uh, say, 30 kilometers. Somebody is 35, the other one is 18. And we have to standardize our training. So we're we not going to say, uh, because you are older, now do two, uh, 10 or 12, no. So it's for your own benefit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you let your children join the police service? Why not? Okay. I ask you that because I asked uh, a former KDF officer, and their answer was different, and they gave reasons. But I asked another one, they answered exactly like you did. Why not? You know, so it's, it's because of what I think about police. Um, I think the police are the most, uh, you know, uh, can I say, you know, we, we are the, the people who just freely give our services. Look at it this way. I'm born and brought up in Nyanza, and I'm deployed in whichever other part of the country, because hardly do we find any police officers working in their home region. And you go there, you, you get more or less assimilated to the local community, understand their language, live with them, serve them freely. Now this, in my view, is what we need for a united country, where people can be willing to go and serve elsewhere without minding whom they are serving, just giving services. Okay. So if all Kenyans were to be like police, we would have a very good country. And so I think that if my children were to go my way, uh, they would be better Kenyans. Just the willingness to provide services to a Kenyan because they're Kenyan, not necessarily. You know, when, even here in Nairobi, if, if you were to sit at the report office, you will, in a, in a day, yeah. you will most likely have handled all the 42 plus communities of Kenya because you never know who is going to come there. Yeah. But you give them equal treatment. Okay. Yes. Sawa, sawa. Uh, I, I, I know you believe in God. I do. And it's written, spare the rod, spoil the child. Oh, yes. You are a parent too. So um, uh, in your days in the GSU, mm -hmm. how did you use to measure your beatings? 
in relation in relation to your child how 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 do you deal with a child and i i'm i'm very interested in this topic how do you beat a child as your son and not someone in shisha mandi uh, <laughs> The balance, the balance. I think there's no balance here. Uh, the question of beating a child... <laughs> equal treatment. The question of beating a child is uh, something that I would not encourage anyone to do. Because it, it really never works. It's in the Bible. Um, I'm a church elder, my friend. And I read the Bible a lot. I've, I would advise any, any parent that what works, sit the child down and talk to them. And if you had to read my book, it would say that you give instructions properly to a child. It's like engraving on stone. It never disappears. But you beat a child today, they could recover tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and in your book, uh, in fact, one of the things that uh, picked my, uh, took my interest was uh, when your main character from Mbaka Malini Mefika, Ngode, um, was in his days as a warrior. Mm -hmm. Uh, the conquerings that they made, it means the application of violence is needed for peace. Before peace comes violence. So how do you write such a wonderful book and still not believe in a dose of violence? Um, I, it's not like I don't believe in a dose of violence. I believe in lawful violence. Lawful you know, violence. police carry guns. Guns are no sticks. So there's violence. But when applied lawfully, then it's okay. But if you apply it unlawfully, then it's a criminal offense. Hey, thank you. Uh, you've put it so nicely. <laughs>